These team, uh, two methods that I will cover today, the first one called rational method, the second one called NRCS method. Both of them are very important if you plan to sit for FE or professional engineer exam both of them these two methods are very important especially for the fe exam anyway what is the main purpose for these two methods these two methods will give you what is the value of this charge i'm sorry what you mean by value of this charge the idea is we have area of land receiving rainfall this rainfall will be collected by this stream do you like to know what is the discharge in this stream due to this rainfall today i will give you what is the value of this charge because if you know what is the value of this charge from the rainfall, I can design this stream. I can figure out what is the depth of water, what is the cross-section area, what is the slope, all of this stuff. Because Q in this stream equal K divide N area hydraulic radius to power two-third slope to power one-half. So if you design... If you if, if you know what is the value of q i can figure out what is the area of the channel or the stream i can figure out what is the required slope if you would like to assume a slope i can figure out the area if you assume the area i can figure out the slope so we can design so we need to figure out how much uh this charge the first method which is very easy method called a rational method uh, the discharge, this is not the discharge, this is the peak discharge or peak runoff. The maximum value of discharge equal CIA or ACI. You can call it CIA. It will be more easy to remember it. Anyway, area. A is the area of land. What is the area you are collecting rainfall from? So A is the drainage area. N acre. N acre. The unit for this area, acre. I, rainfall intensity inch per hour rainfall intensity inch per hour c is a constant various surface condition constant based on the surface uh, what is the surface of this land is it paved unpaved uh, do you have grass uh, what is the level of this grass uh, all of these fun all of these variables should be determined by C. So we have three terms. The first one area of land in acre. The second one constant based on the surface condition. The third one rainfall intensity. Just to remind you, the rainfall intensity last week I told you we have a chart based on the duration of the rainfall i can go up until you hit the frequency or the returning period after two years five years 10 years 25 years 50 years 100 years then i can figure out the rainfall intensity inch per hour area 
you can go back to your surveying class to figure out what is the area of any land. We can figure out what is the area. Does that make sense? Uh, C value will be given in the problem, or we have table. This table can uh, help you to figure out what is the value of C based on the type of uh, surface. I have two points here. The first point is the duration of the rainfall will be taken as the time of concentration. So the time of concentration is taken as is taken as the duration of the rainfall in this method, which you call rational method. So we learned before how to calculate the time of concentration T1 plus T2 plus T3. I can figure out the time of concentration in minutes. This time of concentration will be used at the rainfall duration. Then I will go up to hit the frequency to figure out the intensity I. So how can I figure out the value of I intensity by this story? What is the time of concentration? The time of concentration will be used at the duration of the rainfall. Then I can figure out the intensity. The second one. Do you think if you have area of land, do you think the whole area will be in the same condition? I don't think so. Sometimes we have area of land like commerce. Uh, area, part of the area is grass. We have grass. Another part of the area is parking lot. So we have paved the surface. Another part of the area is uh unpaved area uh, the remaining part is uh, something different so we expect that we have value for c another value for c another value for c another value for c because c is constant based on the surface condition. What will happen if we have composite C value? What you mean by composite? We have area A collected by this stream. That's fine. Every single drop of water in this area will be collected by this stream. That's right. But this area consists of different surface condition. This one has C1, this one has C2, this one has C3, this one has C4, this one has C5. Which C I'm gonna use, we are going to use composite C value. How can I get it? The composite value equal. This C1 time this area. This C2 times this area. This C3 times this area. C4 times its area. C5 times its area. Divide the total area, which is A. Does that make sense? So if you have different surface condition with different value of C, we need to figure out the composite value of C by this expression. Any question so far? If you have any question, let me know. So to summarize what I did or what I said, we have equation uh, for this method, which is called the rational method. This equation will help you to figure out the peak discharge equals CIE. Um, 
area is the area of land in acres. I is the intensity of the rainfall. And I'm going to assume the time of concentration equal the duration of the rainfall. Uh, for C, C is a constant based on the condition of the surface. If you have different conditions, we need to figure out a composite value of C. We have equation, uh, we have example. Let's see what's going on with this example. We need to compute the peak runoff QP for 25 year return period stored using the rational method. So we are going to use rational method, which is CIA or ACI. For a drainage basin located in Pennsylvania, region one, and having the following parameters. Area, total area of the land, 24 acres. Time of concentration is not given, but we have three different types of flow. Overland flow, shallow concentrated flow, stream, and the runoff coefficient. This area of land 24 acres divided into three parts the first part is impervious surface uh, is around 0.5 acre and the value of c equal 0.9 the second part of this area is grass area with 11.5 acres with a c value equal 0.35 the third area of this 24 acres is wooded area is 12 acres the c value equal 0.25 we need to figure out what is the value of this charge we understand that the peak this charge equal c i a i believe the value of a equal 24 acres that's right what is the value of c Anybody can tell me what is the value of C? Do you have one C? No, we have three different area, three different surface condition. The first surface has a C value equal 0.9, the second one 0.35, the third one 0.25. So if you would like to figure out the composite value of C, okay, the value of C 0.9 time its area, 0.5 plus the value of C 0.35 time its area plus the value of C 0.25 time its area 12. All of them divide the total area which is 24. Then I can figure out the composite value of C, 0.9 times 0.5 plus 0.35 times 11.5 plus 0.25 times 12 divide 24. This value will be 0.31. Any questions so far? Guys, do you have any questions so far? If you have any question, please let me know. Okay, so we are done with this parameter and this parameter. What about I? Rainfall intensity. Uh, for Pennsylvania, region one, we are going to use this chart. So I'm gonna use this chart for Pennsylvania. But I have a big issue. What is the rainfall duration? It's not given in the problem. But in this method, I will assume the rainfall duration equal time of concentration. But the time of concentration is not given directly, but we can figure it out. 
Okay, go ahead and figure out the time of concentration by this flow and this flow and this flow. Anybody remember how can I figure out the time of concentration T1? Yes, we can. By this chart, what is the length? 100 feet. What is the surface? Average grass surface. So we have here average grass surface. So from 100 to average grass surface, I'm gonna draw a line. Then the slope is 2%. So we have here a slope equal 2%. So from this pivot line to the slope, I will draw another line to intersect here. The time here will be 10 minutes, 11, 12, 12.2. So we have 12.2 minutes. That makes sense for T1. Any question? Shadow concentrated flow. By using this slope, 4%, and I'm gonna assume it's unpaved, I will go down, so the velocity will be 2.3.2. No, so velocity, equal 3.2 feet per second but i'm not looking for the velocity i'm looking for t2 equal the length of this flow 700 feet divide uh, 750 divide 3.2 so the time will be 234 seconds Please go ahead and convert it to minute. It will be 3.9 minute. T3 for the stream flow. If you would like to figure out the stream flow, we need to figure out the velocity equal K divide N area uh, RH to power two third slope to power one half. Let's do it one by one. Here is the cross section of the stream. Here is the cross section of the stream. I would like to draw it here. This lens, this lens, this depth, three feet, six, 12. Main and coefficient equal 0.032. So what do you think? Let's start. Area equal 6 plus 12 divide 2 times 3. Perimeter equal this lens plus this lens plus this lens. Can you tell me what is the this lens is yes i can i think this one is three this one will be three and this one is three and this one is three that makes sense because three plus three plus six equal twelve anyway so three square plus three square under square root it will be four point twenty four so the parameter will be 4.24 plus 6 plus 4.24 because this lens will be 4.24. So your parameter will be 14.48 feet. And this area equal 
27. So the hydraulic radius equal area divide P 27 divide 14.48. One point eight six. So go back and put your numbers. K one point four eight uh, four six eight. Minimum coefficient point two oh three two. Area equal twenty seven. Hydraulic radius equal one point eight six. Slope point four percent. It will be point oh oh four. So your value will be. Your velocity will be 118.67 feet per second. I think 118 is too much. Okay, let me repeat it one more time. Yeah, 118 feet per second doesn't make sense for me. Okay, one hundred eighteen point forty eight. That's fine. So the T three time of concentration, the third part of the time of concentration will be velocity divide length. One hundred eighteen point forty eight divide. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The lens divide velocity lens divide velocity 1000 which is the lens divide velocity 118.48 Any question? This one will be eight point forty four second. I I think I have issue because this number one hundred eighteen point forty it doesn't make sense to me. Anybody see any error? Probably this is slope. Um, or the cross section is very huge. 118.48 feet per second is too much. Yeah, anyway. So the time equal divided by 60, it will be 0.14 minutes. So the time of concentration equal t1 plus t2 plus t3 t1 equal 12.2 minute t2 equal uh, 3.9 minute t3 equal 0.14 minute so 12.2 plus 3.9 plus 0.14, your value will be 16.24 minutes. Any questions so far? Any questions so far? So, I will go to this chart by time of concentration, which equal rainfall duration equal 16 minutes. So I think 16 will be here. 16 minute. 
I will go up until which one? The return period is 25 years. So I will go up until the third curve for 25 years. Then go horizontal until this value. This value will be around. This one is two, this one is three, this one is four, so 3.5. So the intensity equal 3.5 inch per hour. We are the, we are the area 24 acres. C equal 0.31, I 3.5. Go ahead and find your number. 0.31 times 3.5 times 24 equal 26 cubic feet per second. This area of land, 24 acres. In this area of city, Pennsylvania, for a return period, rainfall 25 years. Uh, and this condition of the area, uh, impervious surface, grass surface, wooded surface, we can collect 26 cubic feet per second. That makes sense? So the type of concentration that we learned before is not required in this problem, but we need to figure it out. Why? Because the type of concentration equal rainfall uh, duration, and then we can figure out the value of intensity. If you have different areas with different C values, we need to figure out the composite value of C. Then you can set up your equation Q big discharge or big runoff equal C I A. Any question? Do you have any question? Okay, thank you, Jennifer. The velocity is 4.4. .4. Looks like I did something wrong. Okay, we can repeat. So 1.468 divided by 0 0.032 time 27, which is the area. Time 1.86 to power two third. Time 0.004 to power one half. I still getting 118. Oh, do you know what is the, the problem? I did this mistake. We don't have area here. The discharge equal K divide N area R H to power two third S to power one half. But I'm getting a velocity. Velocity does not need area here. This is my mistake. I'm sorry, guys. Thank you. 4.4. Looks good. Yeah, because I, I was feeling bad about this number because I cannot expect flowing in a river or canal or stream 100 feet every second doesn't make sense so thank you so much so 4.4 4.4 so 1000 divide 4.4 it will give us 227.9 second which is 3.8 minutes. So the time of concentration will change. Twenty minutes. It will be twenty minutes. So we need to check for twenty minutes. 
go up until you hit this curve probably your intensity will be 3 not 3.5 will be 3 not 3.5 not a big deal but uh, to be more accurate so c.31 time 3 time 24 it will be 22 cubic feet per second 22.3 thank you Jennifer thank you so much so the first method which is called rational method it's a very uh, straightforward method a uh, big discharge or big run of equal cia you need to figure out what is the value of c what is the value of i what is the value of area multiply all of them together to figure out the big discharge however this method has some limitations the primary application of the rational method is an estimating big run off for a small drainage area less than 15 acres will be good, 20 acres, good, 50, good. But if you have 100 acres, 200 acres, no, we need to change. So the rational method shouldn't be used for drainage area like 100 to 200 acres. This method will not be valid. We need to change it to the new method, which is NRCS that I will cover next week, uh, next uh, meeting. In addition to size of drainage, some other important limitation to the rational method. The drainage basin surface characteristics should be homogeneous. Another drainage basin characteristic to be avoided in any significant bonding. If you have bonding like this, uh, that means we cannot count this water. So we don't recommend this method for this type of surface. Anyway, uh, so, so I think the most important limitation is the area. If you have area like 50, 60, 70 acres, we can use rational method. But if you have area uh, 100 or more acres, we don't recommend this method. We recommend it to use NRCS method.